Welcome to Charter Day. My name is Dr. Jennifer Lancaster, and I have the privilege of serving St. Francis College as the Vice President for Academic Affairs and Academic Dean. At this time, it is my pleasure to introduce our new president, President Dr. Miguel Martinez Sines, to begin today's formal program. So I imagine eventually they're going to stop saying new. <laughs> I'm not sure when that's going to be, but I'm paying attention. So uh, they told me to uh, talk less and smile more. <laughs> As for you Hamiltonites, if uh, you've had the, the privilege of seeing Hamilton, you know where the reference is for those of us who are mere mortals. We just get to get that from the soundtrack. Uh, my wife got to see it, but uh, I didn't even get to live it vicariously through her. But one of the things I say, just a reflection on uh, Father Brian and really the issue of Kairos, I think this is important in terms of thinking about meaning and what Lynn Manuel's done for us in terms of getting us to think provocatively about history. Sometimes we forget that uh, there's a root, right? and there are causes to this, and uh, you know it's important for us to reflect. And today is one of those moments where we get to uh, reflect on a charter being established on a college, and we also get to reflect on our accomplishments and the things that could have been. So, as, as, as Father Brian likes to say, and I say it differently, but the real question is, you know, we take this journey through from womb to tomb, and the question is, who are you going to be in the meantime? I, you, some of you heard me say that, but I think it's important for you to understand that. Who are you going to be in the meantime? That's the real question. The fact is that time's going to pass, right? There's going to be something that happens, and especially for the young people, you don't want to get to that time and say, what did I stand for? You don't want to get there and then try to make up a story, right? stories that's what the history is made from and sometimes we contrive the stories just to make ourselves feel good and we've got to look at what it is that we're trying to build I like uh, Michel Foucault he's a philosopher and, and he says really human beings are we are our greatest works of art one of the challenges is we don't take that work seriously enough and so I, I urge you to think about that as we reflect on our history. How are we going to contribute? It's not what story we're going to tell about ourselves that's important, as Aaron Burr reminds us. It's the story that others are going to tell about us that are important. We don't get to determine the stories that are told. Somebody else will. Like somebody else will tell the stories of St. Francis College. And they'll ask the question, what did you stand for as a college? Did you remain committed throughout your history to radical hospitality in a fundamental sense? Or did you forego that? Did you lose your way? And so I urge you to take these moments both to reflect on the history on which we stand and also the blood on which we stand. And I don't mean that too philosophically. I mean that pretty simply. My grandparents my great-grandparents, and you could think about the formation. And I know for, for one, it lives in me, and we have to amplify that history. So I urge us as we take stock of the founding of our college, that we also take a moment to reflect on the history that's both shaped the college, but has shaped us individually. Thank you and welcome. Just so everyone knows, every word that we're supposed to say is in this book, except for his. So those of you who've heard him speak before know that he did a great job. So please give him another round of applause. <laughs> a double major in IT and accounting with a minor in mathematics, Queen Dang has taken a leading role on campus, academically and socially. She serves as a student ambassador, helping prospective students at events like Open House or welcoming new students at orientation. She is a member of the student choir, which will be performing later this evening, and a former student senator in the Student Government Association. 
She is currently president of the IT Club and formerly was president of the Finance Club and SACOR representative of the Accounting Society. And of course, she comes to us today as current president of the Dun Scotus Honor Society. It is now my pleasure to welcome Queen Dang as we induct our newest members. Dr. Lancaster, thank you very much for that lovely introduction. Good afternoon, everyone. First of all, I would like to thank President Martinez Sainz, Dean L Jennifer Lancaster, members of the Board of Trustees, and the Alumni Board, administration, faculty, honored guests, students, family, and friends for coming together to celebrate the 134th Chartering of St. Francis College, an amazing academic institution. As an international student from Vietnam, I have called this college my home away from home, and I believe that I am not the only one who feels that way about this college. And I believe that this is really where our dreams begin and will get larger and larger. And every year at this special event, we celebrate the newest batch of Duns Goddess inductees. These individuals are some of the most exem exemplary students and the biggest dreamers that you uh, will come across at our college. Actively involved in the student activities while maintaining a minimum 3.7 GPA, the candidates are nominated by faculty members, moderators, coaches, and peers. Our inductees truly exemplify the Franciscan values of service, respect, and humility. I would also like to take a moment to thank our moderator, Dr. Jokisran Mather. This group would not be what it is today without your leadership. And thank you for always motivating us to keep our traditions alive. And under your guidance, we were able to continue our work as a cohort and to give back to our community, uh, community with two events. First, by pairing up with Bishop Laughlin Memorial High School and their 11th grade honor English class, we were able to provide them with a book titled American Street to Read Over the Summer. We joined them back in September and brought them to the Brooklyn Book Festival to meet the author of the book, E.B. Zoboy. The second was our partnership with the Make a Difference Club to participate in the big event, a campus-wide community service day. I was away for an honors conference, so Valerie Kaufman, our vice president, led the group at the event, and <clears throat> we volunteered at the most Holy Trinity Church in Williamsburg. The church owns a building that has sunken into disrepair and had been abandoned. So we helped clear the building out to make the renovations possible. It was difficult work, but we worked as a team with the members of the Alpha Lambda Honor Society and the other groups to get the job done ahead of the schedule. And I also would like to extend a heartfelt thank you to our returning members. I would definitely not be able to fulfill my job without their tremendous support, and I ask them to please stand for applause. Valerie Kaufman, the incumbent vice president of the Dense Goddess Honor Society. <laughs> Adriana Rodriguez, my immediate predecessor as president of the Dunn's Goddess Honor Society. <laughs> and I would be remiss if I did not acknowledge Dr. Francis Green, the longtime moderator of the Dunn's Goddess Honor Society. I have met alumni who took an art history class with him 20, 30 years ago, and they shared fond memories of Dr. Green's lectures with me, and to this day, they still consider him one of the best professors they've ever had. So Dr. Green, thank you for setting the standard for what it means to be and in this society, and thank you for being with us today. And now, the moment you have all been waiting for, the induction of the newest batch of the Duns Goddess Honor Society members. We will begin with the class of 2019. Yes. 
Mary Jane Anderson is part of the class of 2019. She is majoring in political science and minoring in economics. She is a member of the women's swim team. She is also the set core representative of the St. Thomas More Pre Law Society and treasurer of the Pi Sigma Alpha Honor Society. Dana Dorenzo. Dana is a junior majoring in accounting and is pursuing the combined bachelor's and master's degree. She's a member of the Accounting Society and the Finance Club. Dana is also the co-captain of the St. Francis Women's Basketball Team, the treasurer of the Student Athletic Advisory Committee, and she will be the vice president of the Dense Goddess Honor Society next year. Melissa Marie Gonzalez. <laughs> Melissa is currently a junior majoring in criminal justice. She is the vice president of the St. Thomas More Pre Law Society, in which she presides over the debate and discussion and the pre law journal committees. She is also the treasurer of Make a Difference Club, a community service a club on campus, and along with being the treasurer, she is also part of the Make a Difference Committee, and the Make a Difference Club organized the second annual event that I just mentioned in my speech, and our honor society took part in it. And post graduation, Melissa wishes to become an FBI special agent or prosecutor. <laughs> Maria Pallarino. Maria is a junior majoring in information technology with a concentration in marketing and a minor in interactive multimedia design. She's the co-captain of the St. Francis Women's basketball team and a representative of the Student Athletic Advisory Committee. Murray is also a student assistant in the Career Services Center and the Athletic Department. Ariana Sasatakis. <laughs> Ariana is currently a junior, double majoring in economics and political science. She is involved in many different departments on campus, ranging from Center for Student Success, Student Activities to Admissions, and competes both in Model United Nations and the Federal Reserve Challenge. While maintaining her 4.0, Ariana has held the positions of Senator, Treasurer, and Speaker of SACOR for the student government, and is currently the President-elect of student government. And also, Ariana has been elected at next year's Duns Goddess President. <laughs> and I would like to continue with the class of 2018. Alexander Baum. <laughs> Alexander will be graduating graduating in this May with a bachelor's degree in political science along with a minor in history. He also serves as the president of the student government, a peer leader, and is in the pre law society. On top of keeping up to date with his academics and extracurricular activities, Alexander also works as an intern at Brooklyn Defender Services and intends on pursuing a career in public service, but not before attending law school next fall. Diana Kaimov. <laughs> Diana is a senior who will be graduating with a bachelor's in biology. She was a part of the English and the Finance Clubs and was also a member of the Pre-Health Professions Club. She is the treasurer of the Tri Beta Biological Honor Society. She is involved in scientific research and volunteers at Biobus to help spread the fun of science to young students. Emma Gaffney. Yeah. 
Emma Gaffney is part of the class of 2018 and is a communications major with a business minor. She is a member of both the swim and the water polo teams. She is also a part of the student athletic advisory committee. <laughs> Valerie Kaufman. Valerie is majoring in communications with a minor in French and Fine Arts. She has served as an editor for SFC Today, a delegate with the Model United Nations Club, a student ambassador, and as vice president for the Dense Girls Honor Society. She values community involvement and volunteers regularly with the New York City Rescue Mission, the West Harlem Democratic Club, and Just Leadership USA. She is the recipient of last year's Dense Girls Scholarship and will be the valedictorian at next month's commencement ceremony. Valerie was unable to attend the convocation last year as she was studying abroad in Paris, so she is excited to be formally inducted this year. Mm -hmm. Kyle Bunsen Ogabon. Kyle is a senior who will be graduating with a Bachelor of Science in Nursing. He was formerly the president of the Asian Cultural Club and a, and a member of the Nursing Club. He also volunteers at the Animal, Animal Care Center of New York and works for a pediatric dental office. <laughs> Suk Maria Paras. Sook is a part of the May class of 2018. She is a psychology major with a minor in history. She is also the vice president of Alpha Lambda Delta National Honor Society, as well as the treasurer of Psy Chi and Psychology, psychology Club. She will begin pursuing her master's in social work at NYU in the fall. Sabina Rajapagic. <laughs> Sabina will be graduating in May with a bachelor's degree in nursing. She was a member of the Greenhouse Nursing and Pre-Med Clubs. She is also a dedicated volunteer for the New York Presbyterian Morgan Stanley Children's Hospital. Now I would like to introduce the honorary inductees. Dean of Sciences and Health Sciences is just the latest position of Dr. Alan Berdowski that has held at St. Francis College. He's been department chair of biology and IT, director of the Faculty Center for Technology and Curriculum Development, associate dean for graduate and professional programs, and dean for program development. Dr. Bodowski has helped launch undergraduate, graduate, and certificate programs, including our fast-growing nursing program. He has also been involved in greening grants from the NIH and NSF for everything, from nursing sim labs to the HDTV studio and multiple classrooms around campus. In his spare time, he teaches pharmacology in the biology department. He has been a visiting scientist at Columbia University, Albert Einstein College of Medicine, and New York University Dental Center. Dr. Bradowski received his BA from Hunter College and his PhD in biology from New York University and postdoctoral training at Tulane University School of Medicine. A member of the founding class of the nursing program told me that she and her fellows will forever be grateful to Dean Bradowski for his dedication to the program and the students. She vividly remembers that during the very first white coat ceremony three years ago, Dean Bradowski in his speech said that the nursing program for St. Francis is a dream of mine and that he encouraged the students you will have many challenges ahead of you, however. I remember, I remind you that you are not on this road alone. You have faculty and staff, and if you have any problems, please share them with us. 
the other student actually encouraged me to go on YouTube and watch the last part of his speech to share his words verbatim with you here today because as she said, Dean Berdowski really was always available to help us solve our problems. Dr. Miguel Martinez Sainz became the 19th president of St. Francis College in September of 2017, the pinnacle of a career that began 17 years ago. Before coming to St. Francis College, Dr. Martinez Sainz served as provost at Audubon University. A Cuban American, President Martinez Sainz's career in education began with an internal transformation. At first a hesitant student, he earned an associate's degree from Tallahassee Community College before transferring to Florida State University and earning a bachelor's degree in religions. He went on to the University of South Florida where he received his master's degree and PhD in philosophy. A deliberate and devoted speaker and writer, Dr. Matthew Science has been published in a number of academic journals and written for for Ohio newspapers, the Huffington Post, and The Hill. Outside the university setting, his experience has been diverse. Dr. Martinez Science has worked with his spouse, Julie Holland, to tutor teens at or below the poverty line. He has also conducted workshops in juvenile detention centers and continues to teach in correctional centers. While in Springfield, he was a founding member of a for a nonprofit organization that has helped develop and implement strategies for social service organizations. And more recently, Dr. Martinez Science has been focused on creating collaborative opportunities between community colleges and four-year universities working on working to connect social entrepreneurs with reentry work. Upon coming to the college, President Martinez Science has been working tirelessly as an inspiring change agent. Under his guidance, numerous initiatives such as the Scholarship Day have been carried out effectively and successfully. President Martinez Science has worked with the Board of Trustees to freeze next year's tuition at 2017 rate, and he's also a big cheerleader of our students' participation in the big event and their attendance at many athletic competitions and games. Yeah. <laughs> At this time, I invite all members of the Dunn Scholars Honor Society, past inductees, and this year's members to please rise. As is Dunn Scholars tradition, we will recite the Dunn Scholars Pledge together. For those of you in the audience, the pledge is on the screen, and for those of you sitting on the dais, a copy has been provided for you. Together, we recite. Realizing the aims of Duns Scotus and the responsibility of membership in a society under his protection, we will forever hold close the attributes linked with the name of our patron. In service, scholarship, and individual character, we will assume as our way of life, in church and in the state, the ideals evidenced in his life, 
namely clarity of vision, innocence of mind, strictness of responsibility, and service to God. Congratulations to you all. And at this time, I invite the Valerie Kaufman, the Vice President of the Dennis Scotus Honor Society, to join me for a very special presentation. Queen, thank you very much. And most importantly, thank you for your leadership as the President of our Society. As you know from my very generous bio, um, last year I was not able to attend Charter Day because I was studying abroad. Not only did I miss the convocation, but I also missed the special announcement that I was chosen as the recipient of last year's Duns Go to Scholarship, an honor I will always treasure. This scholarship has been made possible thanks to two St. Francis College legends, Albert G. Dumar and James I. Conkel, both from the class of 1957. They can... Yeah. They continually honor their lifelong pledge to Duns Scotus and have taken the initiative to establish and grow this enduring educational legacy. The Duns Scotus Scholarship, established 11 years ago, will benefit the college for generations to come. At this time, I invite both Albert, invite both Albert and James to join our moderator, Dr. Mature, on stage to present the Duns Scotus Scholarship to this year's recipient, the president-elect of both Student Government Association and the Duns Scotus Honor Society, Ariana Sartsatakis, class of 2019. <laughs> Okay, I think one more round of applause for all our new inductees, all of our members, and our honorary members. It is now my pleasure to introduce Carol DeSina, class of 2003, Manager, Community, and Customer Management at National Grid, to present the National Grid Scholarships and Internships. Carol? Thank you, Dr. Lancaster. It's an honor and privilege to represent National Grid at my alma mater. I'm so proud to be a St. Francis graduate and equally proud to work for a company with a strong focus on education who supports the betterment of our youth. National Grid currently has more than 100 employees who are St. Francis graduates, and we continually strive to increase that number. We have a long-standing relationship with St. Francis, stemming from our legacy companies, Brooklyn Union Gas, Keyspan, from the days of our former CEO, Bob Cattell, to our current COO, Ken Daly, St. Francis Board of Trustees and Class of 88, and our Senior VP of Finance, Lorraine Lynch, Class of 91. And I can't be remiss in mentioning our former executive, who is now part of the St. Francis family, Madeline Hanley. It gives me great joy in taking part in today's festivities, as Ken bestowed on me the opportunity to present these scholarship and internship awards. This year, we have four of them. The four recipients are rising stars in our eyes, as they went through a demanding competition and interview process. We can't wait for each one of them to join the National Grid family. So with that said, let's get on with the presentation. The first two National Grid awards go to Peggy Chen and George Baryudos. 
Peggy and George, will you please come up and accept your awards? The next award is named after an alumna and the former CFO of St. Francis, June McGriskin. This is being awarded to Joya Kairos. Joya, will you please come up and accept the June McGriskin Award? Last but not least, we have a scholarship named after the legendary St. Francis accounting professor, Dr. Jeffrey Horlick, who announced his retirement at the end of this year. Yes, Dr. Horlick, we name this award after you. In gratitude for all you've done for accounting students and for St. Francis College, and particularly for this scholarship program. You are responsible for so many accounting students obtaining their degree and securing jobs and extremely instrumental in starting and growing this internship and award program with National Grid. Dr. Horlick, please come up and join in presenting the Jeff Dr. Jeffrey Horlick Award to Tanya Fletcher. <laughs> Tanya, please come down and accept your award. So thank you again for this delightful opportunity. We look forward to next year and continuing to grow, to grow our relationship. Thank you. Thank you very much. This year, for the first time at Charter Day, the college will publicly recognize the academic award recipients for the class of 2018. These students were selected by their departments for their outstanding scholastic achievement. And we will start with the accounting program. The Mary A. Liederman Purse for Women in Accounting goes to Mursada Zafarovic. <clears throat> The Archbishop Thomas E. Malloy Catholic Accountants Guild Award goes to Keith Wiley, who unfortunately is not present today, but we'll give him a round of applause anyway. <laughs> Academic Excellence Award in Accounting to a bachelor's student, James Hay. Academic Excellence Award in Accounting for our combined BSMS in, account in Accounting, Melissa Jaggerty. <laughs> Academic Excellence in Accounting for a Master's Student in Accounting, Martin Joksimovich. And the Service Award in Accounting goes to Wanda Gaveras. <laughs> the 
from our management and IT department. The Brother Urban Gnud Memorial Medal for Excellence in Business Management goes to Laura Toth. The Dr. Stanley Willing Award for Excellence in Business Management goes to Stefan Ivanovich. The Award for Excellence in Information Technology goes to Mutaz Ahmad, who is not here today, but we will also give him a round of applause. <laughs> From the Division of Sciences, Math, and Health Promotions, the Brother Jerome Rose Memorial Medal for Excellence in Biology goes to Diana Kamov. The Irving R. Gelfin Medal for Excellence in Healthcare Management goes to Erica Park. The Melissa Sanchez Memorial Purse for Excellence in Health Promotion, Sasha Dastin. The Nursing Leadership Award goes to both Hannah Berger and Megan Queen. The Award for Excellence in Mathematics and also a finalist for the Valedictorian, Anais Grace Comiskey. From the Division of Humanities, the Thomas Cute Senior Award for Excellence in Communication Arts, Valerie Kaufman. The Lynn Jackson Award for Excellence in Communication Arts goes to Pascal Zamore. The Brother Celestin McGarry Memorial Purse for Excellence in English goes to Abhinav Barsoom and Alexandra Resnick. The Brother Camillus Casey Memorial Award for Excellence in International Cultural Studies goes to Valerie Kaufman. From the Division of Social Sciences, the Jared F. Doyle Memorial Award for Excellence in Economics goes to Idi Chuchia. The John C. Gorman, Class of 38, Medal for Excellence in History, goes to Megan Vaughn. The Dr. Louis H. Primavera Award for Mex Excellence in Psychology, and also a finalist for valedictorian, Alexis Vasquez. The Uwe P. Gielen Award for Excellence in Psychology, and also to someone who's almost late for their master's thesis defense, Monica Murray. <laughs> It's not her fault, it's happening right now. 
The Medal for Excellence in Political Science, James Clinton. The Medal for Excellence in Education goes to Justine Colon, who cannot be with us today. And finally, the Brother Columbo Riley Medal for Scholastic Excellence presented to the valedictorian for the class of 2018, Valerie Kaufman. She, she's going to need a bag or something if anyone has a bag. Congratulations to all the winners. Truly remarkable work. At this time, I welcome Linda Warbell Dushevsky, Vice President for Government and Community Relations at St. Francis College and a proud graduate of Brooklyn Law School to introduce our keynote speaker. Thank you, Dean Lancaster. It is my honor to be able to introduce today's keynote speaker, Nicholas W. Allard. As many of you know, um, in my role as the college's Vice President for Government and Community Relations, I have the privilege to sit in on many meetings with the President um, when the President meets with community leaders. So, six years ago, Brooklyn Law School appointed a new dean. Brendan Dugan was then the president of the college, and Brendan wanted to meet with him and welcome him to the community. In prepping for our meeting, we learned that Dean Allard graduated from Princeton University, Oxford University, where he was a Rhodes Scholar, and Yale Law School. We knew that he served as the chair of the Public Policy Department and co-chair of the Government Advocacy Group at Patton Boggs in Washington, D.C. Before that, he was a partner at Latham & Watkins, where he chaired the firm's Government Relations Group. He was a law clerk in San Francisco and Washington, D.C., and worked on the Capitol for the late Senator Edward Kennedy and Daniel Patrick Moynihan. So as you can see, on paper, Dean Allard was very impressive. But after meeting him that day and having a front row seat to the budding friendship of President Dugan and Dean Allard, he is even better in person. At the meeting, we learned that Dean Allard was born on October 4th, the Feast of St. Francis, which was fitting because, like St. Francis, he is generous in kindness and spirit. His intelligence is only matched by his sense of humor. He is down to earth. During his time at Brooklyn Law School, he has made many Im improvements to address the rapidly changing legal field. These initiatives include the accelerated two-year law program, the Center for Urban Business Entrepreneurship, CUBE, which builds on Brooklyn's emergence as a global center for high-tech entrepreneurship and business boot camp, the law school instituted a 15% tuition reduction and launched the Bridge to Success program to support graduates in their job search as part of a comprehensive package of initiatives to make legal education more affordable and accessible. With the help of a St. Francis College alumnus, he has literally opened up the law school to the community. They host hundreds of community events. He has served on numerous academic boards, taught at several law schools, and published scholarly articles on a broad range of issues, including internet law, new media, and privacy. Now, here to present today's keynote address is Dean Nicholas Allard. Wow, who was that guy? <laughs> you know, my mother would believe that introduction, Linda, but you all heard the woman laughing up here. That's my wife. <laughs> so, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> so, um, President uh, Martinez Sines, you, you asked a, a question which I recently asked of Rabbi Raskin over his congregation on Remsen. You know, when am I no longer the new president? Because he introduced me to his congregation as the new president. And I said, Rabbi Raskin, I've been to your home a dozen times for Shabbat dinner. I've lit the Hanukkah candles in Kadman Plaza a couple of times. I've been to every one of the brisses of your grandchildren, and that's a lot. <laughs> and if you don't know what a bris is, ask Father Jordan. 
he said, Nick, you're always the new dean, the new president, until you leave. And then you're the old president. So we all hope, Miguel, that you are the new president here for a very long time. And while we hope you're going to be the new president, I have to say, well, I, I'm experiencing one of the seven deadly sins uh, of envy. <laughs> that voice, <laughs> that presence. When he speaks, he's so, well, there's no other word for it, cool. <laughs> he is like the Barry White <laughs> of academics. I mean, you know, Barry White's love songs, he could be saying anything and it sounded good. Chicken soup. <laughs> I could never do that. It's really awesome. Uh, and by the way, Carol, please convey our regards to the great Bob Cattell and for all that you're doing. Thank you for your school and also for other schools in this community. Bob is a, is a great man. I'm losing myself here. Um, he, um, among many, many other things, served as a trustee on our board. He's a very board of trustees at the law school. And uh, it's because of him that we're very involved in the Don Bosco Cristo Rey program. And we have those students over, the interns from that wonderful high school. And you know, the dirty little secret for any of you who are in a position of, I said dirty secret, and Father Jordan's getting nervous. Um, the dirty little secret is that they make us better when they're there. We all step up and we wanna show them um, how to perform and how to work and how you do your job in a terrific way. And so I find that rather than it being a burden, um, having those Don Bosco uh, interns working with us and, and they get paid, um, it really helps us out. <clears throat> so, Father Jordan quoted, read, and I heard him singing the Star Spangled Banner, so I'm glad he read, um, <laughs> from Ecclesiastes. And if he had, he also said after the song, play ball. I don't know if any of you heard that. <laughs> um, but he, um, if he had kept going, he would have covered um, in the language of Ecclesiastes, the prophet, the eternal cycle of life, using the metaphor of water coming down from the mountaintop. And it, the prophet concludes and says, there is no new thing under the sun. So <clears throat> accidentally, Father, and in keeping with President Martina Sainz's uh, comments, we are actually in sync because time, uh, and the cycle of life and its importance are really the topic I want to talk to you about. Now, I feel a great burden to make it worth your while. Um, this extraordinary program and seeing the extraordinary students and faculty who have accomplished so much, um, I haven't felt like uh, so anticlimactic since once at my Oxford College, at the last minute I learned that before I was to speak, Chris Christofferson was going to sing. <laughs> That's a true story. Um, afterwards, I told everybody that he was my warm-up act. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, I feel, so, Valerie, uh, and we're gonna bring antitrust charges against you. You seem to be monopolizing. Uh, <laughs> so many, and Alex and the others of you, I hope we all see you applying to Brooklyn Law School. I'm sure that you would not only do, do very well, but you'd be uh, exceptional lawyers in the future. We wish you all best, and if you, even if you're not applying, if anybody wants to talk about law school and why you study law, please give me a call. Linda has the number, or send me an email. I'd be happy to sit down with you and talk to you. It's a great, honorable profession. So, <clears throat> with respect to time, for me personally, you know, it seems like it was just yesterday on a very cold April evening wearing a baseball uniform and cleats. Uh, I was getting back into the team bus when we all learned 
my high school teammates and I, um, of the um, shocking assassination of Dr. Reverend Martin Luther King. Seems like it was just yesterday. Yet as we all know, that tragic event in Memphis, Tennessee, an event that rocked this nation and the world, occurred over 50 years ago this month. The very day before Dr. King was shot, he delivered the unforgettable final speech of his life. The title was, I've Been to the Mountaintop. It was an incredible speech, it's unforgettable. And today, his soaring words live, um, but they are words that we know of faith and hope rising miraculously from his own Garden of Gethsemane moment. It's very eerie. I, I urge you, especially the students who haven't heard it or read it, to go back, because he clearly has his own death on his mind, less than 24 hours away from the time when he was shot. And yet he was hopeful, and his words inspire us, his vision of the promised land, a vision that, like Moses, he could see but himself would never reach, uh, are quite remarkable. Now, five years before that, Dr. King visited Brooklyn Heights, and uh, he came to preach only a few streets away at the historic Plymouth Church. Uh, the Plymouth Church, as you know, is a center, what was a center of the abolitionist movement uh, before the Civil War, and it was a stop on the Underground Railroad. His words were amazing, as they often were. He told the Plymouth, Plymouth Church congregation, it's possible to stand up against the unjust system, resist it with all of the strength and all of the soul force that you can muster, and yet not stoop to the level of the hatred and violence in the process. And therefore, he said, he believed that we can work passionately and unrelentlessly for first-class citizenship, and yet not use second-class methods to gain it. Remarkable lesson. Well, as your unique great college, St. Francis, celebrates the anniversary of its chartering, we all are called on to heed Dr. King's words and Dr. Martinez Sainz's words. We're all called on to uh, stand up and step up, especially in these challenging times. All of us should heed those words, but especially for the young people, my message to you is very simple. You are needed. You are needed and you're here and ready just in time, like the cavalry arriving uh, in a Western movie. You're needed to make a difference in the harsh and disruptive struggles played out every day before our eyes and ears, played out all across America, across the world. Uh, people are fighting over nothing less than the future of democracy and the future of humanity. The outcome of fundamental disagreements, indeed epic fights over justice, equality, globalism and the environment, just for example, these fights are gonna determine whether our values and institutions that have been vital to empowering people will continue to evolve and improve, or instead, will civilization descend into a dark dystopian world dominated by power, privilege, greed, cruelty, and unhinged immorality? Well, certainly there's ample reason for concern, and as I, I sense like I've been a little bit of a downer on this joyous celebration. So let me tell you that I'm optimistic, and I think you should be, for many, many reasons. But the major reason that I'm optimistic is what I see when I look out uh, from this spot. All of you gathered here this afternoon, especially the students, know that St. Francis is a special place. And you've learned from the Franciscan tradition, which calls upon you, calls upon all of us to build a better world. It's no exaggeration, no embellishment when I tell you that I consider myself a Franciscan from birth. As uh, Brendan Dugan knew, I was born on the feast day of St. Francis, October 4th. 
43 years ago, our wedding vows with Marla, who's sitting over there, included the prayer of St. Francis. I don't think she quite noticed it. I'm not sure she had ever read the sequel uh, to the Old Testament. That's pretty funny, come on. <laughs> but, um, you know, we read those words, Lord, make us an instrument of your peace, and so on. So I feel a deep connection uh, to your college, and I was very privileged, as Linda noted, to be good friends with your late president, Brendan Dugan. A painting of Assisi that was a gift from him hangs in my office uh, today. You're very blessed to be led by Dr. Miguel Martinez Sines, a true champion of the Franciscan values of service and compassion. And of course, you're blessed to have here as your campus minister, the one and only Father Brian Jordan, a true son of Brooklyn, a source of infinite inspiration, and sometimes some good running tips. I was honored to write the foreword to Father Jordan's compelling book. Listen to this title. He complained about me maybe talking too long. Listen to this title. His title is longer than the foreword of my book. <laughs> the Heroic Priesthood of Father William B. Farrell, 1867 to 1930. Fighting anti-Catholicism, waterfront gangsterism, and government corruption in New York. That's the title of the book. <laughs> it's a little book with a big title, but it carries a real wallop, and it's a great story. Uh, Father Farrell was a gutsy priest who fought on behalf of poor families in Brooklyn and stood up for corruption. He was a real Brooklyn hero and someone whose example can motivate us today as we continue to fight the world's good fights. So because of those who have gone before you, and those of the, who lead the college so ably today, and knowing about your talent and your aspirations and the character of all of you students, I'm confident that you're superbly equipped and motivated to make a positive difference for our communities, our city, our nation, and the world. Out of the winter of our discontent, out of a spring that often feels like it's still winter, the endless winter, change nevertheless is in the air. You can just feel it, and you should be part of it. <clears throat> Now, as I say these big words to you, it may not escape your students' attention that there are a few years separating us. I confess, I, and I hope you forgive me, uh, that I sometimes fail to understand what makes you all tick. You do realize you're a little weird. <laughs> I mean, you take pictures of your food. What's that all about? I mean, you text people sitting right next to you. <laughs> You're too polite, but my law students are doing it in a class all the time. And this I really don't get. You pay people to distress and rip your jeans before you buy them. <laughs> I mean, I'm getting so fat, all I have to do is lean over and it happens. <laughs> for free. But I do know this about you, and this will ring true. You're all passionate about making the world a better place. You want your life's work to be worthwhile and to make a difference. So my message to the students of St. Francis College is simple. In brief, you're needed, you're needed to be heroes, you're needed to be teachers, and you're needed to be civil. This is a time begging for heroes. In the words of a song from the hit musical that you heard about, uh, history has its eyes on you. Think about that. This is your time. This is your opportunity to step up and take on responsibilities for the imperfect world in which we live and that your children will in turn inherit. You can remind us of the classic qualities of the heroes we long have admired. Those qualities such as selfishness, courage, modesty, respect, and adherence to core principles. Or, in terms uh, that the Duns Scotus uh, honorees know, the qualities of clarity of vision, innocence, responsibility, and service. These are the qualities that will enable you to be heroes for the rest of the world, and you should try. We've recently seen how people 
can mobilize themselves if government is not doing the job, if our spiritual institutions are falling short, whatever it is, people themselves can say enough and they can mobilize and focus attention, raise awareness, and change perceptions. One, only look, one need only look at how citizens have organized to take back their inalienable rights in the Black Lives Matter movement, the Me Too movement, the Time's Up movement, uh, and you know, also the remarkable recent initiative of the Parkland Strong post-shootings children's army, really, it is astonishing. And this is just the tip of the iceberg of what we can ex expect, but you know, outcomes are far from certain. And history teaches us um, that these are huge issues that they need to address, from climate change to world health, from poverty and oppression and violence, from bigotry to intolerance. There is plenty of work for you to do. And you know, when you think about it, when you mull it over, you might be tempted to say, it's too big. What difference can I make? How can I even try? And so, when you're thinking that way, I might call your attention to the words of the great Sir Edmund Burke, who said, the greatest mistake someone can make is to do nothing because they believe they can only do a little. So just keep that in mind. It might help. But also, I have great confidence in what you're going to be able to do. You have a couple of secret weapons. You have the innate empathy and the blessed impatience and the energy of youth to drive you forward. You're determined and fearless about taking on well-heeled, formidable redoubts of the status quo and the tired, cynical complacency of your elders. Most of all, you are generally, as I said, devoted to making the world a better place. Go for it, stay woke. Your elders are cheering you on. I didn't know I was that hip. <laughs> Your elders are cheering you on. My, my own kids said that people would laugh at me if I tried to get away with that. <laughs> Stay woke, okay. Your elders are cheering you on, and we will follow you. Don't count on dragging on our coattails. We need you to step up. You're also needed to teach all of us young and not so young, are witnessing a grand forced civics lesson brought daily to us by rip from the headlines news. You know what I'm talking about. And we're all engaged in a teaching moment that links generations with a mutual chance to learn from one another. It's not easy for movements seeking disruptive change or innovative solutions to succeed against determined, entrenched, self-perpetuating beliefs and interests like the gun lobby. You are well prepared. That's kind of an applause line. You know, you want to pack up there. All right. It doesn't count. That was a charity applause because I asked for it. All right. It doesn't really count. You are well prepared to educate how others harness their collective power effectively, how to persevere, and what needs to be done to turn ambition into reality. It's very common to hear about millennials and Z's great interest in networks and mentors. Usually that interest is characterized in careerist and self-centered and focused on what a network or mentor can do for you. But you can defy that stereotype. You can be uncommon. You can be a catalyst that strengthens and helps networks effectively advance in common purpose against stubborn, self-perpetuating adversaries. You can teach people how together their dreams can become reality. Finally, we must strive ceaselessly to be civil. Now by that, I mean civil in the true sense of the word in both our public and private lives. Civility has come to be synonymous with courtesy and good manners, uh, you know, in contrast to raising our voices in argument as though we're on a cable news panel or shouting in an open room when someone else is speaking. Yet the Latin root for civility, civis, means much more because it literally means being a citizen. As Daniel Mendelssohn, a great professor of the humanities explains, to be civil is literally to engage in a deeply important activity. It's to behave conscientiously, fulfilling the duties of a free citizen by committing oneself to speech and action, 
duly sensitive to the needs of our fellow citizens. For example, for starters, at the very least, we can vote. We can encourage others to vote. Elections matter. Enough said. I have no doubt that the people of St. Pro the people of St. Francis College will help lead the way forward as they have done for more than 150 years. At the forefront, you're sure to meet the students and the graduates of Brooklyn Law School who are using the power of their legal educations to make a positive difference. Did you hear that ad, Alex? Okay. I only wish selfishly to live long enough to see how you all will make the future better for my six grandchildren and their children. And I mean that sincerely. Even though on a few, more than a few days, I'm filled with sadness and concern about the state of affairs in our crazy world, I am both optimistic and confident you're going to succeed. First, with respect to the United States, I'm constantly in awe of our brilliantly engineered, self-correcting, cantilevered system of limited democratic self-government. That system gives me faith that we will eventually, if not soon, awake from our national nightmares. Second, I have confidence in the power of people, especially young people, to overcome even the most intractable problems. An oyster produces a pearl, something new and beautiful, responding to the unwanted irritation of a piece of grit or sand. More impressively, people throughout our country and in countries everywhere are paying attention and getting involved and pushing for alternatives to division, inequality, abandonment of law, autocracy, intolerance, hate, and violence. So be heroes who can hang lanterns, who we can hang lanterns over to lead and guide us. Be teachers to show us how to achieve our worthy goals and engage in efforts to benefit more than yourself. In other words, be civil. In the spirit of St. Francis, start by doing what's necessary, then take on and do what's possible, and suddenly you'll be doing the impossible. God bless, thank you all very much. Dean Allard, thank you very much. One more time, round of applause. I know it seems like we must be out of awards by now, but we're not quite out. <laughs> but we're, we're getting there. It is now my pleasure to introduce the presentation for the St. Francis College Entrepreneurship Award. To present this award, please welcome Thomas J. Volpe, Chairman Emeritus of the St. Francis College Board of Trustees and last year's recipient of the Entrepreneurship Award, Mr. Volpe. Thank you all, it's good to see you. The remarks by uh, Dean Allard uh, and the remarks that we heard last week from Dr. Demisa Moyo was here give a lot of hope and inspiration and it's in your hands to carry that hope and inspiration forward. As a longtime supporter of St. Francis College for Entrepreneurship, Sordia Davis is using her business skills to do well, but also to do good. Her company, Greenhouse Echo Cleaning, works one home or office at a time to keep things clean without using harmful chemicals. Ms. Davis switched careers from movie publicist to echo cleaning after her grandmother died from long-term exposure to toxic chemicals. A true entrepreneur, in addition to running Greenhouse, she also contributes to HDTV magazine, writes blogs for the Huffington Post, and has been featured in numerous publications on television. Ms. Davis's contributions go beyond the business world. She also has sat on New York State Senator Kirsten Gillibrand's Small Business and MWBE subcommittees, and was an active member of the White House Business Council. 
In addition to helping St. Francis students at our Center for Entrepreneurship, she also volunteers to help public school students with the Network for Teaching Entrepreneurship. It is indeed my pleasure to present the 2018 St. Francis College Entrepreneurship Award to Sordia Davis. Hi, um, thank you St. Francis for this wonderful recognition and award. Um, I'm very excited to be here and I thank you for your continuous work in supporting entrepreneurs um, in Brooklyn and in New York City. I started my company with a simple goal of making cleaning healthy for our, our employees. After 13 years in business, our mission has evolved to include providing jobs for people from underserved communities. Companies large and small are on a mission to tackle big global issues such as climate change, poverty, gender inequality. However, companies often fail to see the connection between local and global impact. My presence here today is a testament of the importance of building an alliance between business and the local community. Entrepreneurs are problem solvers, disruptors. We think creatively, we're resourceful, and as such, I think we have a responsibility to give back to our communities and to help others wherever and whomever we can. Some of the best ways for companies to change the world is to start by doing local actions. As an entrepreneur, I value my team members, and I understand the value of hiring good team members. One of the cornerstones for my company is to provide much needed jobs and income for local workforce. This, is not, this not only improves my company and its bottom line, but it improves the neighborhoods and the communities we serve and live in. Believing in people allows entrepreneurs to build a framework for strong, sustainable growth not only for you and the community, but for the entire world. Many entrepreneurs have a big, audacious goal or a problem we're trying to solve. However, tackling smaller issues that affect your local community can also have widespread global implications as it di directly engages employees in social impact work. Do a quick survey of your peers and employees to find out which community organizations and overall community needs they're most passionate about. This will give you a good idea of which community and volunteer opportunities may be good for your company and whatever institutions you're a part of. Get personally involved. Entrepreneurs and other corporate leaders should become personally involved in their local communities and organizations. Getting involved locally will help promote a global vision, allowing others to better understand the why of your brand, which is also your personal brand uh, and your mission. While thinking globally and acting locally has been a common phrase among environmentalists, it now includes tackling social issues such as homelessness, financial literacy, and mental health support. Giving businesses throughout the world an opportunity to impact big change by first investing in the people and the communities they serve. So in accepting this award today, I want to reaffirm my commitment to working with my community and St. Francis as an institution that fosters a place for excellence and ideas for the next generation of entrepreneurs. And to our young people today, I, my one recommendation is to fail quickly. Put yourself out there. I'm so excited of all the achievements that you guys have accomplished to date but there's a lot to learn in failure. Do not be afraid to fail. Do not run out of time to fail. Take big risks, change the world, and be aggressive about it. Thank you.
Sadia, congratulations. Thank you for going above and beyond for our entrepreneurship students. At this time, the president has made his way to the middle of the arena and will join us to honor St. Francis College employees who have completed 15 and 25 years of dedicated service to our community. The first set of recipients will receive the Pax Abonum medals instituted by the Board of Trustees and named from one of the earliest greetings of St. Francis of Assisi. This medal recognizes and honors those members of the faculty who have completed 15 years and 25 years of dedicated, loyal, preeminent service at St. Francis College. A driving force in the life of St. Francis of Assisi and his followers for more than 700 years, peace and goodness is a simple yet meaningful expression of the objective of Franciscan educators. The bestowal of this medal of Franciscan education represents the highest praise and tribute of the St. Francis College community and assures a continuing extension of peace and goodness at the college. For 25 years of dedicated service as a faculty member, Dr. Renee Goodstein. She's not here, but we'll clap for her anyway. For 15 years of dedicated service as a faculty member from the Department of Chemistry and Physics, Dr. Jerry Davidson. Also not present today, but celebrating 15 years of service is Dr. Athena Devlin. A senior adjunct lecturer in our religious studies department and all around keeper of all things Franciscan mission, Dr. Alexandria Egler. A senior adjunct instructor in the management department, James Fazio. <laughs> Associate professor and chair of the English department, Dr. Wendy Galgan. Senior Adjunct Lecturer in the Mathematics Department, Marlon Seaton. <laughs> lecturer in the Department of Information Technology, Corinne Smoliza. Congratulations to all of the faculty. The second set of recipients will receive the President's Award. Instituted in 1972, the President's Award honors non-instructional personnel. The award recognizes dedicated, loyal, and preeminent service by members of the administration and staff who have completed 15 and 25 years of dedicated, loyal, preeminent service at the college. The bestowal of this award acknowledges accumulated service, interrupted or not, and pays tribute to the significant contribution that non-instructional personnel make to the St. Francis College community. The President's Award is the highest service honor administration and staff members can receive, and with it comes the college's grateful appreciation. For 25 years of dedicated service to the St. Francis College community, Jim Hoffman. For 15 years of dedicated service to the St. Francis College community, Director of Student Financial Services, Maria Blandino. <laughs> we 
now honor the Director of Career Development, last year inducted into the Duns Scotus Honor Society, Naomi Kinley. And congratulations to the Vice President of Facilities Management and Capital Projects, Kevin O'Rourke. <laughs> President Miguel, you can sit down now. <laughs> if you see him whispering, that's what he's saying. Am I supposed to get up? Should I sit down? Do I have to get up? So we're just going to have a few announcements before we end our program today. Uh, we're going to sing our, we're going to have our benediction and then sing our alma mater and then the stage party will recess and we promise not to eat all of the food before you get out there. All of the award recipients, please stay behind so we can take some beautiful photos. And uh, let's not forget that our choir will be performing this evening at 6 p.m. in the Moroni Theater and the performance is free and all of you are invited. It is now my pleasure to introduce uh, Anna Braun, an SFC student who is determined, optimistic, energetic, and above all, Franciscan. Choosing the vocation of nursing because the profession is all about compassion, she was selected to represent the college on the pilgrimage to Rome and Assisi last year. In just three weeks, she will graduate with her classmates at the Coney Island Amphitheater. To deliver our benediction, please welcome Anna Braun, class of 2018. Thank you. Let us kindly bow our heads in prayers, remembering we are all in presence of our loving Creator. Great and gracious God, we thank you for today bestowing your infinite blessings upon everyone here, especially those honored. During their time at the college, these honorees have received much good academically, socially, professionally, as much as important they sh in the form of Franciscan values. As each honorees begins to the next stage of their journey to which you have called them, guide them to see all the good they have inside and to share this good with the world in significant need. May each one have always have courage, courage, conviction, and vulnerability to live from their hearts, as did our founder, St. Francis, and his greatest follower, St. Clair. For all the learning, successes, joys, and even bruises these honorees have experienced, experienced during their time at the college, we say thanks. For whatever you have planned, for them in the future, we simply say yes. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing for the singing of our alma mater. The words are up on the screen for all of those who have it, have it memorized by now. <laughs> Congratulations to our honorees and God bless St. Francis College.